fun. Oh, sh look at him. Man, I'm just coming in here and it's already looking kind of nasty for these folks here. If they need help, I'll, I'll help them out. If not, I'll just keep going. You guys need any help? Yeah. You guys, do you guys need any help? Yeah. You got, you got yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I can get you guys over here to the hard pack sand. Is that a two wheel drive? Huh? Is that a two wheel drive? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to put you over here. See if I can put you to the hard pack sand. But you, I, I really recommend that you stay back here. Yeah. yeah. Stay on the hard pack sand and go back where those cars are. So you're just gonna get stuck again. Let me get in front of you. Do you uh, see if you can identify uh, a tow hook in the front. He's got something like right on the bumper. Beautiful. All right, let me get over there. While I get set up, I want to thank you for joining us on another South Padre Island camping adventure. Ray from Blue Lines 5.0 and our buddy Noe will come along too. Now let's get these island visitors out. These cold still roads are all we'll ever find a Well, I did a complete video on that East Cut issue where they blocked it off. So make sure you go check that out if you haven't done so yet. Um, I'm going to be focusing on the camping part in this particular video, and we're going to be doing some fishing. So let's see how it goes, man. I, I haven't done this in a while, so this overnight camping trip should be pretty cool. Uh, I got a Gazelle T4 Plus tent, which is double the size of the one I used to have. So we'll be setting that up and, you know, we'll go ahead and tell you a little bit about it. Hopefully you'll find it interesting. But anyway, on we go. We got a long way to go right now. So. Charlie Golf X-Ray, even Charlie. For those of you new to Coastal GX, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking our content. Your support encourages me to keep bringing you more videos. Also, we typically drive the full 27 miles north from the Cameron County Beach Access 6 entrance to the Port Mansfield Cut. We are always on the lookout for interesting things along the way. Oh, wait, pull, pull, I need this canopy here. Ample. My friend Ray loves to salvage abandoned canopies that otherwise litter the landscape. So the goal would be to, to me would be to park over there you, you don't think the truck will make it to the, to the signs? If you recall my previous video, we set up in front of the barricades. But before we made our move, we noticed the sand was softer and deeper than usual. I'll go first. I'll go first, what happens? Are you sure? Help me out. Está bueno. <laughs> just, just, we'll put it on four low, ya de una vez. Ray stepped up and volunteered to scout the area knowing I would be on standby to get him out if need be. Uh, oh, sh look at him. I'm going to go over there. Second time uh, you've gotten stuck up here. What do you got to say for yourself? You didn't learn the first time? <laughs> well, but then there's always an adventure and I don't mind. This is a learning experience for everybody else who comes out here that there's a possibility that you will get stuck out here. Okay? Good thing you have good friends that are going me this weekend. 
Rob Randoli here. We have two uh, cable vehicles who are able to pull me out. This is, uh, I think, the worst I've ever been stuck. Yeah. That, that low. But, uh, well, you weren't that stuck, but you buried yourself. You yeah. should have stopped. But that's all right. This was right. done so we could see what uh, Robert's what Robert's truck can do here. I better buckle up. Buckle up. You're on camera. Yeah. Okay, y'all ready? Robert, you want to explain to the viewers the importance of having proper equipment? The way we have it hooked up that makes it so much easier to get out of ruts. Yeah. Uh, was it? Yeah, absolutely. So it's very important to know that the right equipment for the right job is very important. Whatever you guys do, you know this is a tool. So in this particular case, we had a raised truck very, very buried, like down to the frame extremely soft sand. This would send a lot of people into a panic, especially if you have, even if you have another vehicle trying to tow you out. If you uh, use the common strap that you get at, you know, at Vance or any one of those pet boys or any of these uh, places, you know, it's probably not going to do the job because you're only going to have the recovery vehicle probably dig itself down. So what you want to do is you want to have a kinetic rope such as this one. This one is the Smitty Belt kinetic rope, but there's so many brands out there. As long as it's a kinetic rope, it's rated to the right uh, weight, you're not gonna have any issues. So that's just the rope part, okay? The other parts that are extremely important are the recovery points, and we keep talking about that. In this particular case, you know, I'm just using your average shackle okay and this is rated right here it's to uh, uh it's 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 attached to the toe hitch as you can see do not use do not use the regular ball okay that is not meant for yanking vehicles out or anything like that because that little ball is probably just gonna rip off and go through your back window like a projectile and it could even leave a hole in the back of your head so you don't want to mess around with that. So recovery equipment is extremely important when coming out here. You can come out here and have some fun, but just remember that you need to have the right tools. Yeah, in that flat area, right? Yeah, I'm gonna park right there. We found the perfect camping spot just about a mile south of the East Cut along the beach. It was my first time setting up my Gazelle T4 Plus tent, so I recruited help from Ray and Noe. We had filmed an entire video under the sun and had that whole Ray rescue mission. My prolonged exposure to the heat was taking a toll on my health. I didn't realize it until later, but I had every single symptom of a heat stroke. I stopped what I was doing and continued to hydrate and cool down in my truck. Mm. 
After a good while, I began to stabilize myself and decided to move by the water's edge to seek some relief. Hey, my friends, so today has been a very, very hot day. I gotta tell you, I hadn't been out here at least you know, to stay overnight or do any of this stuff, but it was really, really draining. Uh, the hot weather, you know, I gotta tell you the difference that I was feeling just between that area over there when I was setting up camp, okay? I almost felt sick, man. I mean, it was that hot and maybe I'm not, maybe I'm just not used to it anymore or I haven't been tested like that, tested myself in a while, but setting up camp was brutal, okay? Thank God I had Ray, thank God I had uh, Noe over here to help me out, set up the tent, but just walking from that area right there, okay, right from there, to right here, right by the, sh the, the, right by the, the, the ocean over here, and I'm saying it, I, this is obviously meant for the folks who are not familiar with South Padre Island, who don't come out here often, but the, the drop and the comfortable setting over here by the, by the ocean is incredible. It's like instant relief, instant relief. So after I kind of chilled out a little bit, went to my vehicle, hit that AC on high, and I, didn't, I just wanted to hydrate just wanted to hydrate and uh you know get out there after a while after i felt started feeling better you know then that's when i started you know hanging out over here with noe but it was such an uncomfortable situation for me today and uh you know just setting up the camp and it's a very heavy tent and all that but i'll get to it i'll go and explain a little bit more about the tent Okay guys, this is the Gazelle T4 tent. The one that you've seen me use so many times. Uh, very easy to use, durable, just an awesome tent. Um, this is what I was using. I, I sold it to a, one of my subscribers. He's very happy. He and his wife are very happy with it. They've used it several times. Uh, Ray has this one right here. He loaned it out to Noe because we wanted to test out my new Gazelle T4 Plus tent. Okay, as you can see, it's got like a gazebo over here. You can roll down the little windows and you can use it as, a, as its own bedroom, as its own, uh, pretty much its own little area. So you can have one person over here and another person over here, okay? So let me show you a little bit more. So just, just like the regular Gazelle T, uh, T4 tent, it comes with this uh, canopy over here, okay? The rain fly, they call it, I'm sorry. And uh, it's the same, same setup, like I said, you know, they both pop up, but as you can imagine, the tent's gonna weigh twice as much. The tent is gonna be, uh, twice as harder to set up more stakes to carry more stuff to do um i don't know i'm i'm, I'm, I'm kind of regretting i'm kind of regretting my purchase to be honest with you now, i'll tell you why i'm regretting my purchase is because <clears throat> you know it's a lot easier it was a lot easier for me just to unload the regular t4 set it up on my own it's all good when i bought this thing I thought, hey, I was going to be coming out here more often with my son, Robbie. Robbie got a, a job and his career has gone off and he's up in Houston. So, yeah, it's I'm on my own. So I don't need this big tent. It's just too much. I mean, it's something that is probably going to be better if you set it up with two people. So, yeah, I'm not I'm not too crazy about that. I'm not too crazy about that. Um, so yeah, do I regret not having my regular T4? Yeah, yeah, this is, this is really cool. I mean, let's, let's go inside so I can show you. It's really cool, but the thing is that 
I don't really need it, you know? I don't need all this space if it's just gonna be me. There's plenty of space. There's plenty of space. So you can see it's got the, the zipper. Never mind all that, all that sand. I brought in that sand. It's just the way it is. That's part of the beach life. This is what's gonna happen, you know? And I haven't set up my my uh, my uh, mattress. I'll be doing that a little bit. Uh, Ray's gonna be sleeping in this area today, okay? Uh, he's gonna try this out. But what's pretty cool is that we have this divider right here, so he's gonna have his privacy, you know, going in through here. And uh, I'm gonna be sleeping on this other side which is what you expect, a little more traditional T4 uh, setup with the little windows and all that stuff that you expect, you know? Yes, I did bring a fan because last time I came out here, it was super hot around this time last year and it was brutal. So I didn't screw up this time, I brought a fan. And uh, over here, you know, you have these, these huge, huge windows and uh, basically what people can use them for, you know, use this area over here as, I guess, like a little gazebo. They wanna, there's a lot of mosquitoes or whatever. You can go ahead and just set up over here and uh, you, maybe even a cooking area, you know? So what is the difference? Is it as easy? There's, there's a lot of videos out there on how to set it up. So I'm not gonna waste your time on that. But is it as easy as setting up a T4 uh, with an extra person? It is better, but it's still harder. Even with two people, it's still harder. Uh, it has these little beams right here, okay? You still have to use these beams. So that kind of sucks. Uh, there's no beams with the regular T4. Um, but hey if you want more space i guess you have to expect that it's uh so yeah that's pretty much it with this thing i mean everything else it's still built with a lot of quality high quality you know it's really neat you know it's got a oh uh, what do you call it it's got you know the high quality zippers that you expect from the gazelle tent lineup you know, high quality products, high quality material, you know, but uh, yeah. So convenience, eh, I don't know, not so much, man. Not, not for me, I, I'm not feeling it. Look at what Noe got. A big old gaff top. Check it out. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what a gaff top is or why it's called that, it's because of that very distinctive dorsal fin right there. But some people say that they eat them, so I just heard Ray. I don't know if he's going to do they it. They are edible. Uh, They're edible? There are a lot of people that said they are very edible. And uh, I think Ray, one of his... Uh, Viewers last time said that they even give scholarship. If you catch something this big, I have no idea. Uh, I, I'm greasy. Yeah. I have no idea um, if they do, but look at that beautiful blue color to it. I don't know if it's picking it up. Nice yeah. little color to that. All right, Ray, let me rinse off some of this. A mocha's very interested in that cat. What do you think, Ray? You think you're gonna try to cook that thing or what? Well, uh, I, I do, but I think I want a bigger one because I want everybody to feast on it. But I guess what, we're gonna try it, why not? Yeah. Just put it in the ice box. Go put it in the ice box. Oh put it in the ice box. Oh my God. We're gonna, they say they're tasty. Staring at 
the window while the world gets in place But I'll be flying in the sky I'll be hiding way up high We noticed a couple of U.S. Fish and Wildlife units heading to the East Cut. A long time went by and we never saw them return. That led us to believe there was something possibly wrong. Hey guys, so we are heading over back to the East Cut. It's not, we're not too far away from it. But the reason we're heading back is because earlier we saw a couple of uh, US Fish and Wildlife officers, their vehicles heading that way. It's been a while. I mean, unless they're patrolling the area, you know, which is fine, but we're just wondering if, you know, they're stuck or, you know, something happened because they never came back. So, you know, uh, Noe and Noe was extra vigilant and he's the one that, that noticed that and he alerted us to it. And so now I'm following him way over there and we're going to go see. But yeah, it seems like there is something wrong because I see the fish and wildlife people with a strap. And it appears like something's going on. Maybe they already rescued them, but I see the strap there. It seems like somebody probably already got them out. So, yeah, that's interesting. As it turns out, both of the officers ran into the same issue as Ray. They were well prepared and got themselves out by the time we got there. Ramon, one of our subscribers, dropped by our camp to say hello. We are a friendly bunch, so if you ever see us, introduce yourself and give me some feedback. Take care, brother. Ramon was heading to the Port Mansfield jetties with his family. On his way back, he showed us his catch, so you don't want to miss that later in this video. These cold still roads are all we'll ever find the memories made from trails we left behind along the way i know these roads will take us home okay guys so ramon we met him as he was heading over to the to the jetties and now check him out he says he's got something oh yeah wow oh <laughs> you got him yeah good job, good job. Also, very nice okay guys so as always you know you got ray over here he's always doing some trickery but you know he's up to his old tricks over here with uh, the barbecue but this time around he is uh, gonna give us a treat you saw him filleting that gaff yes. top earlier yes I tried you I tried. tried I tried and uh -huh. uh, I was able to get some of it off yeah uh, I've never filleted a cat before yeah it's a gaff top but uh, I did I've, I've got Pieces off and we're gonna we're gonna cook it up and, and eat it like I promised the viewers last time. I Look at this, Ray. There's you a, did it, bro. Freaking <laughs> delicious. Oh, ceviche anyway, but it's gonna taste awesome. But I believe yeah. it's gonna taste freaking awesome because yeah. look how good it is raw. <laughs> yeah. We got a late visit from overlanding enthusiast Javi in his decked out Tacoma. He showed up just in time to taste the gaff top catfish. That's pretty good, man. Not bad, right? Not bad. Not bad no, at all. No, not bad. Good flavor. It is, right? Good flavor. All we did was uh, add a little olive oil, put the lemons on top, and put the onion, season it, with salt and pepper, and we didn't use uh, Old Bay seasoning. So, but, uh, okay, Robert, yeah, it's good it All right, brother. Here goes nothing, man. Solid, man. Not bad, right? Solid. Ooh, look at that. That looks good, man. Oh, uh, onion. So, and uh, I'm gonna put a little lime on this. Yeah. 
chopping off a little serrano pepper right yeah. here. Can you use it, Robert? Here we go, guys. Okay, bro. You gotta, you gotta give us a test. This one warm up. Put it yeah. cool down a little bit. And, uh, this is our pork tortilla. Uh, we did put a little olive oil in there. Uh huh. So, here you go. Yeah. Honest, honest. Not bad at all. Not Good. bad? Yeah. It don't taste, uh, what do you call it, what do you say, gamey or fishy? Fishy? No, not at all. It tastes really good. Uh, the flavor is really good. Uh, I could order this at a restaurant. It has a very good flavor to it. Wow. Mm. We relaxed by the fire for a while and we slowly started heading to our tents for some much needed rest. Hey guys, it is 5.40 in the morning. I've been, yeah, I've been in my vehicle for about an hour by now. And I gotta tell you, um, man, my anxiety is through the roof. I haven't slept, just had a miserable night. I'm in my car because I miscalculated the power from my Jackery. I don't know how the heck that happened. I mean, obviously, you know, I was was pulling more more juice than what was going into it. Um, it was pretty much at full power in the afternoon, but yeah, I mean, I am use I was using the refrigerator, was using my CPAP, was using uh, a fan, like a like a big fan. So maybe that's what pulled it. But I think the number one thing that happened was I had an air mattress and that air mattress had a leak so it would automatically kick in that pump that air pump and what was happening was um, it was pulling extra power from the Jackery and so I ended up with losing complete power um, needless to say it is it's 80 some degrees and it's at night here at the beach okay so that's pretty crazy um it's hot it's it's warm so i had to use that fan you know and if i don't have that fan i can't sleep if i don't have that cpap i can't sleep you know and then there's the anxiety of oh my goodness my uh food is gonna you know i mean i hope it, nothing bad happens to it I mean, I know, I mean, nobody's opening the damn thing, you know, so it should be okay. You know, um, I don't think it'll spoil by the morning to make breakfast and, well, whatever happens, happens after that. But I remembered that I had um, the 12 volt connector to my refrigerator with me. So I came out to my vehicle, plugged it in. And so at least I can, you know, the food will be okay. Um, you know it never fell below or, or went over you know the the limit but um yeah stuff like this man makes me i wish i could just you know get out of here and go straight to a hotel or something because i know that it's gonna be rough it's gonna be rough for me because it's it was already a battle you know trying to set up camp and you know deal with the heat and all that well, I got breakfast duty in the morning, okay? So, I don't know how I'm gonna do that. I don't know where I'm gonna get the energy to to shoot video and do all that, and then tear it down. Yeah, that's gonna be rough, man. So, yeah, well, wish me luck. But right now, I've been trying to go to sleep. I can't go to sleep. I'm just worried about so many things, and, and you know, I can't clear my head. So, anyway. We'll check you later when daylight comes around. Friends, I don't know what you all believe in, but I said a prayer and somehow mustered up the strength to focus up. I made the best of the situation and still got my drone shots. I 
A little, a little more than that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sausage stew, what? Oh yeah. Sausage fajitas, ribs, <laughs> jalapeno poppers, catfish. <laughs> <laughs> Breakfast to serve. Did you wake up sick or anything? No. I didn't let the crew down, and I was still able to make my Mexican dad breakfast. What I did notice was that I was sick to my stomach and I couldn't keep any food down. I focused up on hydrating and was able to pick up camp with the help of my friends. Do it! Oh, dude, you actually did it though. One more time. Hey, my friends, I had to leave camp. Thank goodness. I had the help from Ray and Noe to pack up because, I mean, as I told you guys, you know, last night was just brutal, didn't get any sleep, and I was feeling kind of, you know, weird. I mean, a little, like, dehydrated, but I had been drinking a lot of water, and yeah, sure enough, this morning I had all the symptoms and uh, just felt sick to my stomach, couldn't keep anything down, and yeah uh, it, it was brutal and then the sun it's barely 10 in the morning it's barely 10 a.m and you know it's already beating down beating down so hard uh big difference like i said in the video you know from you know uh hanging out at you know where the tents are at camp closer to the dunes the temperature difference the way it feels is so so dramatically different um a lot cooler by the water but anyway just tearing down was such a pain like i said you know thank goodness i had some help but um uh, yeah that's gonna wrap it up we're gonna wrap up the video if you haven't subscribed yet please do so it really helps the channel motivates me to bring you more content and uh go check out my buddy ray as well at blue lines 5.0 he's a good guy he's trying to build his channel as well um if you liked any of the stuff that I use or you're curious about the, the gear that I'm using, go ahead and check, uh, check out the Amazon links on my video description or you can just send me a, a message and I'm pretty good about responding. So, you know, if you want to ask me anything about what happened or whatever, you know, feel free to do so. I'd be more than happy to chat with you guys. Uh, so anyway, that's going to be it. Y'all take care and we'll see you on the next one.